First things first, I feel very confident saying that Pirate Nation had a lot to do with us winning that football game. Uh, there were some critical times in the game where, as a coach, you can feel the effect of the crowd, whether it be for you or against you and how your team communicates. And we did a really, really good job uh, from a, a fan standpoint, and Dowdy Ficklin was, was perfect for this weekend. I reached out to several people over the last couple of days and told them that I thought that was a real, real big deal in that game, uh, the way that we turned out and the way that we uh, gave our kids support. That, that was in, impressive. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that I think that we, we beat a really good football team in NC State. They were physical in their front. Uh, their skill guys were a lot bigger and stronger uh, than we you know, probably imagined them being. We thought they were big and strong, but when we got them out on the field, they were even bigger and even stronger. Um, they were well coached. You know, they played through the echo of the whistle, I thought. Uh, it was a battle. It was a physical battle the entire time. That was a, a big-time matchup, like I said, before the game. And it was, it was, we're, we're very happy to, be come out, to come out on the victorious side of, of things. Uh, defensively, I want to talk about our, uh, our front. I thought Dimitri McGill played a good game, really, really good game. Uh, we've challenged him from a physical conditioning standpoint. Uh, in, in January, and I'm happy to say that he was able to play 51 snaps at, at, at about 94% uh, effort grade. And that is so hard for a defensive lineman to do, so we're very proud of him. Right behind our defensive front, uh, Jordan Williams had another great game. Uh, he, was, uh, he was detailed in his alignment and his assignments. I thought he got us lined up. I thought Cam also did a good job back there at the linebacker position. Our outside linebackers uh, uh, played his, and they played their butt off. Um, Pratt probably had the best practice, uh, the best uh, game that we've seen him put together. Uh, we, we thought that all week coming into this, he was locked in. He went out. Coach Kenwick Thompson did a great job with him, and it gave us a chance uh, to make plays. Uh, our, our defensive secondary made some critical plays in that game. Uh, it was physical at the catch point a couple of times that were you know, I thought that they had some catches that they could make on us. And, and you know, Deshaun Benton had a big hit down on the right-hand side. It was a critical point in the game. Uh, we needed that to happen. Uh, we tackled at about 18 of 21, I think, our percentages was. Unfortunately, the few that we didn't uh, were big-time uh, situations and scores. We're, we're, we're working to fix that. But if, if everybody will tackle at that kind of a rate throughout the game, unfortunately, they're in the back end. Uh, so you got to get guys on the ground. We're working like heck to make sure that we get that done. But all in all, I thought our, our defense played a good football team and played really well. We won the, uh, the uh, situational battle uh, defensively in that game, especially when it, it mattered. Uh, from a special team standpoint, we got you know we got to make sure that we we can we can convert on some of those um, uh, extra points and and then that field goal uh, kind of combined uh, let us know what we had. But when we got called on. I think Devarius Bronson has showed a distinguishing characteristic of toughness. That was one of the most critical kickoffs that you'll ever see in the game after you get a score like that. And to be able to get it and, and get it tackled inside of the five uh, was truly team football because as soon as they got tackled inside of the five, you know, my mind is thinking only about time. And, and that being able to be tackled inside of the five there was a, was a big deal. So we're, we're proud of Devarius. He's shown up. Uh, two weeks in a row um, uh, as a great special teams player. And then offensively, wow, uh, I thought our, our offensive line competed. Uh, and I was, I was really proud of them. Uh, going into that game was probably one of the um, best defensive lines that we we uh, seen anywhere that we've been in college, just with the skill that they had at defensive end and the strength and speed they had at defensive tackle. Um, it, it, was, it was really good to see our guys go out and compete at a really, really, uh, really high level. And, uh, you know, they played so many people in their defensive front. You know, it was amazing. They were running in four guys at a time. And when you can do that in, in, in such a heated uh, environment uh, from both standpoints, then, then you get a good, you know, you get, you get good results out of that usually. But our guys stepped up to the calls. And then, you know, Philip Nelson, I mean, what can you say about him? When he picked himself up off the ground and came out and he was telling his teammates, let's go, let's go. I think we took a critical step. Uh, he took a critical step in leadership because those guys were going crazy on the sideline when they seen him get up. Uh, they were very defensive of him, and that's where you want the rest of the crew to be for the captain uh, of, of the team out there on the football field. Uh, I don't know how much I can say about our receivers and how hard they played without the football. 
a lot of people think it's all about catching the ball, and, and you do get to see stats. But we played ex- extremely well without the football on the perimeter. Uh, there were some times they beat us, but they beat us sometimes schematically on trapping the corner uh, out wide. It's very hard to get that guy blocked when he's shooting inside on you. Uh, but I thought they competed at a high level. And then uh, Anthony and, and, and Devin, and, and, and they, just, they just played really, really, really well. Uh, Anthony had some fumbles. But in this game, it's a next play mentality. Now, if you're going to play football, you got to have uh, really, really thick skin because it was hard for him to come to the sideline and deal with all the coaching that goes on. But at the end of the game, he was right back in there, and we trusted him to go make a play, and he made a play. Uh, but I wanted to save uh, the last uh, comment about a guy that I thought was very critical in us winning this football game. Uh, James Summers is, um, is about as complete a football player as I've ever been around, period. And uh, the, the position flexibility that he gives us, we don't take for granted. We know how hard it is to go and prepare. Just imagine if you had five jobs and you only have the same eight hours a day to do those five jobs and to get ready for those five jobs. That's what he does on a weekly basis. So all in that, all together, it was a great team win for us. Uh, we got to put it to bed on, on uh, Sunday, and uh, we moved on. We had a great practice Sunday night preparing for South Carolina, going into a big-time SEC environment against a big-time SEC school with a big-time SEC coach and a big-time SEC talent. And we are looking forward to the challenge of going on the road with our guys. Uh, we've, we've done everything to prepare. One of the reasons why we went to Charlotte was just to even practice every detail of getting on and off the bus and, and the details of practicing and playing and, and all that uh, carried over. So we're, we'll, we'll be prepared uh, by the time game time gets here. Um, this was a physical battle for us last week, and this will be another physical battle. They're extremely talented at the defensive line position. Um, what they have at defensive end um, is, is extremely athletic. Uh, it's an SEC talented team. And physically on the interior, they're good. Uh, they're anchored at linebacker. They got great players. Um, and, you know, and, and Lamons at, at corner presents a challenge for us because he can truly cover and he's physical. Uh, usually you get kind of one, a great cover guy that's not physical or a great a physical specimen that can't really stay close to receivers. So we'll be challenged at that position. Offensively, I'm very, um, you know, go back to defense just for a second. I got so much respect for Coach Robinson and, and Coach Muschamp. They've been doing it together a long time. They know each other. The communication won't be a problem with them. Uh, they know how to motivate players. Um, I went down and visited them when they were at all at Florida together because of an offensive coach that they have, Kurt Roper who's one of the sharpest guys I've been in a, in a meeting room with. Coached with him a long time. Uh, offensively, uh, they're, they're blessed to have, once again, you know, it seems like every other week we're in a situation where we've got to prepare for two quarterbacks. Presents a challenge. Um, very familiar with um, Brandon McElwain uh, from Newtown. We recruited him, and we thought he was a great player. Very good with the ball, uh, great with his feet, had great pocket presence. Uh, presents challenges out on the perimeter. Uh, we also um, have, have been able to watch over the last couple of days or and, and watching him play. Um, he is more of a they, – they feel a little bit more comfortable with him throwing the football right now. All in all, it, it presents a, a tough challenge. they got a great young freshman out at wide receiver, big body like some of the guys we saw last week. It's going to be a hard tackle. It's pretty good in short spaces. Can ex- you got an extended catch radius. So uh, we, we have – we have our, our, you know, our hands full. I think uh, uh, best position in the offensive line. Their, their guard is, is one of the better ones we will see. Um, he he reminds me a lot of the guys that we we faced when we were preparing in the National Football League. So great football team all around. We look forward to the challenge and our guys will be ready. We had a great first day of practice on yesterday, getting ready for them. Uh, our guys are are healthy for the most part, uh, and that was a blessing coming out of a battle the way that we just came out of. How are you guys planning to prepare for a road environment like that? You know, we're going to try to do everything from a noise standpoint. We'll, we'll, we'll be prepared. Uh, but the, most, the biggest thing about the road and, is the travel and, and, and being focused and locked in and every person just doing their job and, and focusing on the game and the situational football. Situational football in this game will be really, really important because in situational football times, that's when the crowd uh, is really evident. Going in, coming out, third down. Uh, Red zone, strike zone, some of those situational football times is where we got to be really good. So looking forward uh, to moving fast throughout the rest of this week, we got to be able to play in noise and we've got to do our job. Specifically, uh, what kind of tapes are you watching knowing that this is a new coach, but you also have to keep tabs on personnel and things of that nature? 
You know, we're trying to watch it all. You know, we're going all the way back to Florida. A lot of that staff was t together then, and then we're going, of course, and we're watching what he did at Auburn. I mean, we, we, we have to watch a lot of tape. I mean, it's just a, it's an inordinate amount of tape. And then, you know, watching the first two games sometimes can be good, sometimes can be bad, because you don't know how much of the playbook they truly have open, whether it's offensively or defensively, and they're getting better. Just as we are getting better, they are getting better, and they're becoming more familiar with each other. The coaches are becoming more familiar with the players. The players are becoming more familiar. So it's always the unknown. Uh, so as coaches, what we try to do is watch a, a big, a huge chunk of tape. And then by the time the, the guys roll in here uh, tomorrow morning, we try to reduce that down to what we feel uh, will be helpful for them without you know, just you know, clouding them with a lot of information that's useless. How much does uh, Demage help you uh, having him back as a full-timer? Yeah, it was noticeable. Uh, we, we, we were able to be stout in some situations uh, and get some, you know, some stops at the line of scrimmage or just getting down a big, strong back this past week. Um, I, I thought we did a good job there. I think we kept our – I think Dimaggio also helps us keep our linebackers cleaner to the football. Uh, you know, he can get on an edge, but he can still stay right down the center and have his <laughs> eyes in the gap and his body in another gap. And he can get it done both ways, so we're really impressed uh, with him. How much does uh, Deke Adams, you know, he recruited a lot of these guys, how much does his familiarity kind of help? Well, we had um, a personnel meeting uh, with, with Deke on both sides of the ball where I sat in and I, I get my notes from that personnel meeting. And we did it with the offensive side and the defensive side. And, his, you know, he knows a lot about these kids. He knows, um, you know, he knows how, what they play for, how they play, uh, the positions that they feel more comfortable at. So we got a great amount of intel uh, from, from Deke. We're really happy that he's on our staff. We're also really happy he's coaching our defensive line. How much do you lean on guys like Isaiah Jones and uh, Isaiah Jones and those guys that have played in this environment before a couple years ago? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll lean on our seniors and our captains a lot. Um, but, you know, offense will help you win games. Defense will really help you win championships and road games. So we're going to lean on our defense. Uh, we're going to lean on our offense as well. But we feel like, you know, defensively, we got to continue to grow and continue to get better. And our senior leadership on, on, on defense is starting to show up. And even some of our younger juniors are starting to show up on defense. So we're going to lead on that senior and captain leadership. Coach, how important is it to have that you have this confidence? Your team knew they could win, but now the results on the field show it, this confidence going into a place like South Carolina. You know, confidence is always great, right? In everything that you do in life, I think, you know, if you're confident in something and you put your mind and you work really hard to uh, accomplish a goal, then it's going to be great for you. Uh, but the most important thing is we have to be confident in the way that we're going to practice tomorrow and the way that our coaches are preparing right now. Uh, I'm confident in that. I'm confident in the process. I'm really not, you know, concerned about uh, last week as much as people will think. It probably means a lot more outside of the building than it does in the building when you're in season because you're so focused on the day. And it's kind of the way we're trying to raise our, our kids in, a, in our program. And hopefully, you know, in two to three years, our program will be, you know, known for trying to win each in every day. And that's, you know, that confidence is good, but I'm more confident in the way we're going to practice tomorrow and then moving forward and moving forward. We've had some really, really good football practices here. Um, and, you know, it has a lot to do with our kids, has a lot to do with our staff, it has a lot to do with our support staff and our training, our conditioning. Uh, but we've had some good, good practices, and we've got to keep doing that. First road game for you guys, uh, how important is it going to be to get off to a good start? Say again, please. First road game for you guys. How important is it going to be to kind of get off to a, to a fast start down there in Columbia? I think it's important for us to get off to a clean start. I don't know if necessarily fast is the term. Uh, we're going to have to play four quarters of football. We're going to have to play, might have to play beyond that. But what we have to do is Pirates can't beat Pirates, right? We've got to play clean ball. Uh, we've got to communicate well. Our mental errors can't be uh, what we're talking about at halftime. Uh, you know, alignment issues can't be what we're talking about at halftime. If we're talking about those things, that's not a clean start. So rather than a fast start, I would just prefer us just play clean football and everything else will take care of itself. Coach, last week you said you can learn uh, as much in a, in a win as you can in a loss, maybe more in a win. You, you still feel that way after this weekend? And, and, and the few things that were problems, are they fixable, like the, some missed tackles on defense, some of the kicking issues? Yeah, we, we definitely think we learned a lot about our team. It's always good when you learn a lot and you win. 
Um, we, we had a tackling circuit uh, on a Sunday night, uh, so you guys know how I feel about that. And we were in uh, just helmets, but we had a, a good tackling circuit where we used pads and, and different things to keep our kids up, but also emphasize how we tackle. Um, and, and, and even just lowering the target, you know, by Bobby, and we would have had him in the game. And that was a huge critical error, you know, in the game because our, our game plan, he evolved around Bobby a little bit in this game, and a lot of people didn't know that. Uh, so we practice on that. The kicking, we're working every way that we can possibly work. And uh, I'm using some motivational tactics that, that we, we tend to use with, with kickers at times. So we're going to use those, and we'll continue to move forward. I got faith in those guys. I trust them. Uh, I'll put them out there again. Uh, you know, I don't like always going forward on fourth down, but if we got to do it, I'm going to do it. Speaking of going on fourth down, is that more of a confidence in the offense to make it or confidence in the defense that if you don't make it, they'll at least hold some the comp combination of the both it's probably 50 50. Uh, you know I really think you know we've worked hard in situational football I really I really believe that but I had a lot of confidence in our guys being able to go get one yard or two yards and or even at times three yards just because you know when you feel the flow of the game it has a lot to do with that too right just the flow of the game and where we're going and what we have at the time and where we are on the field some of that but you know, I, I really think it thinks you, you think about what you have on the menu as far as the offense and then defensively what you have on the menu for where we're actually at at that point in time. Do we have uh, just an excellent plan and game plan? So the coaches put me in a situation a lot of times where some of those calls seem like they're hard, but they're not that hard because I know what the plan is in that situation. I know what we have. I know what they're doing. I know that we can stop them in some of those situations, but I also think – uh, that from uh, a tendency standpoint and, uh, you know, just studying the tendency of what they're going to do to us defensively, that we can put together a pretty good play in those situations. How long do you know Will Muschamp? Um, I don't know him well. Um, I've only spent maybe one day uh, around him. Uh, I think he coaches with a tremendous amount of passion. When I was down there, he was coaching the defense, of course, uh, and I was uh, uh, working with uh, Coach Roper uh, to, to, you know, just try to get better as a coach and then also help them kind of, you know, with some of the stuff that they were doing down there. It was good. Joker Phillips was down there as a receiver coach then. And um, so I, I know kind of the group of a lot better than Coach Muschamp, but got a tremendous amount of respect for him.